Got him. That's a good one. That's a sheep's head. Come on. Come on up. Yeah, that's a good one. Good morning, y'all. We are back out here on the sea dew today, and we are going to be running around. It is our first trip out around the island looking for flounder, redfish, speckled trout, things like that. We also got a lot of reports that there are some bull reds in the area, so I brought some bigger tackle as well. But yeah, it's kind of just a early spring scouting trip. We're going to get around here, see what we can find. Y'all stay tuned, see if we make something happen. All right, let's go. Got him. There we go. First fish. What do we got? <laughs> Doggone red snapper. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our first fish right there. We back away from this rig. We did start way on inshore. Could not find an inshore bite anywhere. Decided to make a switch. Come out here with this old crank of crab. See if the, the sheep's head are still around. And the first fish of the morning is a red snapper. Bye-bye. Yeah, we're probably about three miles off the beach or so right now. We're in about 50 foot of water. And I just got this fake crab right here from Crank of Lures. And uh, does amazing for sheep's head. There may still be some sheep's head hanging around right here. So we're gonna drop it back down, see if we can get us one. Going back down. All right, I think that's a good dip. Oh, we're already on. Are we on or are we snagged? Oh, now that was a fish. That was a fish. I thought I was snagged, but that's not feeling like sheep's head. I gotta make sure I'm not frayed up. That is not feeling like sheep's head. It was just a one solid tug. Got him, there he goes. Got that one off the structure. Another snapper, dang. That was high up in the water column. I know there's something other than snapper down there that I can get. I'm hoping the sheep's head are still in the area. We're in mid-April right now. They should still be here. Got them. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Be the right species. I think it is. I don't think that's a snapper. What do we got? Come here, pull away from the structure. I don't think that's a snapper. Sheep's head, baby, yeah! That's the targeted species, right there. Let's go. <laughs> Had to sort through a couple of micro snapper to get to this guy, but look at that one. Boom, yeah, let's go. All right, y'all, that is our first keeper fish of the day, and it is a sheep's head. These guys are absolutely delicious. So we're gonna be putting this guy in the box, drop him back down, see if we can get us a couple more of these. All right, let's go ahead and ease back in position right here. Kind of nosed up on the down current side right here. It's helping me keep my position pretty good. There we go. Yeah, this leg right here is about the only leg I can stay put on. Mm. Oh! Dude, that one bit it on the drop. The little feisty guy. Got him. Got him. That's feeling like a snapper. It is. Let go of that dude. All right, guys, we're out here catching a lot of fish, getting a lot of bites. We got us one good sheep's head in the box, but check it out. I got a ton of awesome content getting ready to go y'all's way. Flounder's starting to pop off. The offshore bite is starting to pop off. If y'all would, please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 75,000 subscribers this year. I need all y'all's help to do that. We're going to get back in here, 
gotta get us some more of them sheep's head. So all I'm doing is throwing this little cranker crab right next to that piling right there, giving it a little bit of slack. We're in 50 foot of water. I'm not even letting it get halfway down, probably about 15 feet down or so. If I try to target those fish all the way on the bottom, I'm probably gonna get broke off. But once you get down there, just giving it some light little twitches and then letting it sit there for a minute. The claws on that lure have like this sponge-like material. So the current will work the lure by itself. Really, there he goes. Really without me doing anything. I just got bit. Come back for it. Got him. That was a thump. That's a good fish. That's feeling like a sheep's head. Thump the fire out of it. Ah, oh, that's another snapper. Man. <laughs> Can't get away from him. Got him. That's a good one. That's a sheep's head. Come on. Come on up. Yeah, that's a good one. Good sheep's head. Gotta get away from the rig. Woo! Come on. I mean, he came up and smoked it. Woo! That's a big one. That's a really nice fish. Come on. Get my rod tip back up. That is a stud. Absolute stud. Yeah, oh my goodness. Let's go. Get in the net, get in the net, get in the net. Yeah! Boom! If y'all have not picked up a cranker crab right there, they are legit, especially for catching these sheep's head, but they catch all sorts of stuff. I've caught red drum, black drum, you name it. I've caught them. If they're around structure, they will eat these crabs right here. Now to show y'all this fish right here, Look at that stud of a sheep's head. That guy's every bit of 22, 23 inches right there. What an amazing catch out here today. For those of y'all wondering, yes, we are bleeding our fish before we throw them in the cooler. Uh, but check it out. Cranky Crab has a ton of different lure sizes. Also, disclaimer, I am not affiliated with them at all. I use their product because, I mean, let's just face it, they catch a ton of fish. But check it out, they make lures that are a lot bigger, right? If y'all want me to get some bigger sized crabs and target redfish or offshore species, y'all comment below. Let me know if y'all wanna see something like that. We are here mid-April. The bait shops are no longer carrying fiddler crabs anymore. They do have shrimp that's available, but you know, on this jet ski, it's not the most practical thing to do i can rig up a bait well for them but why not come out here with just some artificials which we never really intended on even going sheep's head fishing today the inshore bite was absolute trash <laughs> decided to come out here and check on it and sure enough they are active around here got him ah i hope he didn't break me got to back out of piling no he didn't break me he didn't break me, but he did snag it. All right, y'all, well, I wasn't recording, but I picked up another another nice sheep's head right here. It's gonna be the third keeper for the box. We've only been out here for about 30 minutes. We've caught four red snapper and three keeper sheep's head all in about 30, 45 minutes. All right, well, there he is right there. Probably the smallest one of the day coming in around 18, 19 inches. Got him. Oh, ho, ho. missed that one. I mean, he slammed it. Give him to eat again. Got him on the drop. Yeah, that's a good one. We got us a big one, y'all. We got to back out of here. That's a good one. Ah, oh, dang it. Came off right at the boat. Ah, oh, had a lot going on with that one. Trying to back out of the rig and everything so I didn't get sucked in there. 
All right, we'll get them to eat again. We'll get them to eat again. Maybe not that one, but there's more down there. All right, y'all, well, the wind and the current switch made it pretty, pretty hard for me to keep my line straight down, especially with that light crab lure. So we're gonna go ahead and head in now. I'm gonna clean up these fish. We're gonna go ahead and cook them for y'all. Well, we had a pretty good morning on the water, caught several sheep's head, missed several other ones, caught some red snapper, not a bad day. About to get ready to go cook these sheep's head. I've already cleaned them up, got the ski cleaned up. Everything's ready to go, about ready to start cooking. But I do want to show you all something real quick. So not too long ago, we had something pretty catastrophic happen at our house here. So I was out turkey hunting and I came in from our trip uh, probably around noon to find water on the outside of my house just gushing down this wall right here. And when I went into my kitchen, water was everywhere. So check this out right here. We will not be cooking anything on our back porch. So all of this, it's pretty much some of the stuff that was in my kitchen that got gutted. I would normally be cooking right back there. Show y'all the inside real quick. So all of this stuff right here, used to be in the cabinets and all right in here so currently this is my kitchen right now <laughs> we've got no sink no stove no microwave none of that it's all pretty much been well it's right there but it's not usable right now uh, we had our water heater which was right up there and our water heater decided to bust no telling how long it was running, but the whole house was full of water. So, been dealing with that right now. Pretty crazy to come home from a turkey hunt to see like just water pouring on the outside of your house. So, if y'all are wondering why I have not posted a lot of content lately, y'all can see that we're kind of dealing with something here on the home front, so anyways so we're not going to be cooking inside we're not going to be cooking on our back porch we're going to go right over here to our fire pit and we're going to be cooking right there and seeing how we really don't have a good means of washing dishes right now i'm going to try to keep this really really simple the first thing we got to do go ahead and light this thing and get it going I mean, it's a little warm, a little, little toasty for a fire, but you can never beat a good fire, right? So, got our fire going right there. We're gonna go ahead, head up here, start prepping on some of our fish, get it ready to go over here on these coals. Hey y'all, so get ready cooking this recipe. We're just gonna start off with some onions and we just got us a nice little sheet pan right there. Gonna be able to fit us two good fillets for one for me, one for the wife. And I just got me a Vidalia onion right there. And I'm just going to cut them down into slices. And then we're just going to sprinkle them onions all around the bottom of the pan. Spread them out just a little bit. So now we got our sheep's head fillets. Just went ahead and patted them dry. Make sure I don't have any bones right there. And I'm going to take some Compass Blend uh, Seafood Blend right here. Great stuff. Straight out of, I believe, Ocean Springs, Mississippi. But we're going to go down fairly heavy with that stuff right there. And then we're going to flip do the same thing. And then we're just going to transfer those over here to this pan. Just like that right there. Now we're just going to take some sticks of butter here. Kind of rake it over the top of some of the, these pieces of fish. Just like that. Now we're just going to go in with some grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes. Put them over the top. And now normally I would use fresh lemon. I really didn't feel like uh, going back to the store to get lemon. So just got this stuff right here. It'll do just fine. Add our citrus element to our fish, just like that. And now, all we gotta do 
take us a little bit of tin foil and wrap it all up. Got our coals just about ready, so we'll go ahead and flatten that out just a little bit. Yeah, got a nice bed of coals down there. And then we're gonna put this grill grate right over the top of them coals, just like that. And then we're gonna set our fish right over here off the side, just like that. We're gonna let that roll for about 30 minutes and I'm gonna flip it about halfway just to put this edge closer to the fire. So, yep, we'll let that roll, see what she looks like. Fish has been gone for about 40 minutes. It's about time to pull it off, but check it out. I don't have any mitts. We lost our mitts in our kitchen disaster so i'm gonna have to be quick with this and hopefully it don't burn me too bad mm, that ain't gonna work maybe if i take this shovel oh that ain't good how are we gonna get it come on come on this could be genius or this could be disaster. I think we got it. I think we got it. Boom! <laughs> Woo! All right, y'all. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this back right here. Oh man, that smells absolutely awesome. Very clean, fresh, and healthy, somewhat like some of that fish back right there yeah she's done all right got a feeling she's still pretty hot now i'm not one to eat a whole lot of bait fish i, I like my fish either grilled like directly on fire fried obviously black and stuff like that uh, when you bake a fish it's kind of cooking in its own juices this that and other you, you don't get that kind of crunchy uh bite that that texture right it's a lot of more of a kind of a a mushier texture i guess so i'm not always a huge fan of doing it like this this is a new way on the channel i've never done it like this here on the channel um so yeah going in for a bite obviously man that's good that is real good that's real good it's kind of a a sweet bite maybe from the tomatoes oh yeah <laughs> that's good yeah very clean very clean tasting fish sheep's head is easily one of the top three inshore fish to eat i would say you know you got triple tail is the king of inshore fish flounder is next i give sheep's head third and probably redfish but that is really, really good right there. Obviously, I had no other way to cook it other than down there. I mean, I guess I could have used some of this stuff right here, but I just felt pretty cluttered. All of this mess behind me, this is something that's probably gonna be going on for the next, I don't know, six to eight weeks or so. Um, the house is still drying right now. So we got Serve Pro had to come out, hook up all the dryers, stuff like that. Um, that was on Tuesday. I think we got about another four or five days of the house drying. And then we can look at maybe starting to piece some of this stuff back together. So long road getting all of this back to normal really kind of puzzles me and makes me wonder why they, why they put a hot water heater on the second uh, story of, of any home. But anyways, it is what it is. We'll work through it. I'm going to continue to push out content for y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all did, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. See y'all next time.